is Father Shemek and the deacon is Dan Moore. The gathering song is Gather 572, the King of Glory, number 572. Would you all please stand and join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My friends, we come to celebrate the 28th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, and today's Liturgy of the Word focuses our, words on the word, our eyes on the word of thanksgiving. We give thanks to God for the great blessings and graces we received this past week, and as we come at the conclusion of this week, we ask for abundant blessings to come to our way to our families and friends. So, as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this moment, I would like to invite all the children to come in front of the altar for the blessing before the children's liturgy of the word. Okay. Dear children, God uses the seasons to teach us many things, and in fall, God teaches us about letting go. As the trees lose their leaves and the world prepares for winter sleep, we too can focus on what we need to change and what we need to let go in our lives. Go now with your prayer leaders to listen for what God might be asking of you. And may God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are walking
a reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord leaves whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. The words to the responsorial psalm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained, Therefore, I bear with everything 
for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met, met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. Good morning. It came as no surprise to me that when preparing this homily, I learned today's gospel is an option for use for a proclamation on Thanksgiving Day, and I would say an appropriate option at that. While I prayed my way through making some sense of the gospel, how I believe God speaks to us here today, I sensed the themes of thanksgiving and gratitude would prevail. Of course, not thanksgiving in the sense of the roasted turkey and the fixings and the American football, weeks away, and incidentally, not Canadian thanksgiving observed tomorrow, but thanksgiving in a sense of our relationship with God 
and how genuine gratitude is expressed as a sacred act of returning, returning to God. Sound familiar? Sounds like the Samaritan leper in today's gospel. What do you think Jesus wants for you and me in this story? From beginning to end, I feel tension. For the very route Jesus chooses through Samaria and Galilee is a route of tension. Peoples opposed to each other. He had to expect tension by encountering a mix of people in the crowd, to encounter a small group afflicted with leprosy, ostracized from society, and maybe not all of the Jewish faith. By telling them that by telling them all to visit the priests to be declared clean, he must have expected attention that not all of them would follow his instruction. When he asks, where are the other nine? It feels like he's asking me and, and you, testing us with that question. The easy answer, Lord, the other nine are following your instruction. The real answer lies in accepting the healing work of Jesus that extends beyond borders, beyond walks of life, beyond any label or categories we put others into. Isn't it only right and just that we render gratitude for God, gratitude to God for everything we have, everything, always, and everywhere? Returning is a sacred act. We meet Naaman, a great army commander who has contracted leprosy. When he learns that the Israelite prophet Elisha has healing power, he decides Elisha will heal him. The broader story describes Naaman as an arrogant leader, sending lavish gifts ahead of his arrival to impress Elisha. Naaman expects to be received with honor and glory due his status when he arrives to meet the prophet. But Elisha refuses to come out of his house to greet the great man, instead telling him to go and wash in the Jordan River. Naaman is offended by this reception and enraged at Elisha's instruction to wash in the Jordan. But his servants urge him to take a dip. And he is astonished at his healing. Naaman realizes the power of the God of Israel working through the prophet has healed him. He asks forgiveness and receives an offer of peace and blessing from Elisha. Naaman's experience of gratitude in the unlimited reach of God's healing power and his reconciliation to the one God of Israel illustrates a parallel to the Samaritan leper in Luke's gospel. In this, there is inspiration for each of us to build on our practices of gratitude in order to draw closer to God. Naaman was sent out by Elisha, go in peace just like the Samaritan leper was sent by Jesus, stand up and go. But not before they returned to God, their gratitude and a change of heart, a conversion. Returning is a sacred act. For us Catholic Christians, the ultimate practice of gratitude, of course, is regular, full and active participation in Sunday Mass. We all have our reasons why we are here today and our reasons why we return every week. But I want to single out a response we give during Mass that for some might tend towards rote repetition but has significant meaning. After the prayer over the offerings at the beginning of the Eucharistic prayer, the priest says, and we respond, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
The priest then continues with the preface, it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. And he continues with the preface to the Eucharistic prayer, expounding on why it is truly right and just. It is right and just. It might sound redundant, but <clears throat> right has a translation history from Greek, meaning a measure. Giving thanks to God in the liturgy is exactly right. To offer our hearts to God at Mass is the exact method that befits the act of praising and thanking God who loves us first without measure. The word just has a slightly different meaning. This word refers to the fact that giving God worship and thanksgiving is what God truly deserves. As children of God, our duty is to give God what justly belongs to God, our active worship. This duty is a serious obligation that defines our relationship to God. The church has made it clear over many generations, the way God deserves to be worshiped is to receive the sacrifice of our contrite hearts, our very selves at mass every Sunday. Returning to Mass is a sacred act. Do we truly believe that God wants our happiness, our peace, our peace of mind and heart? Why do peace of mind and heart seem so elusive for so many? I'm certainly no expert as I tend towards cynicism or the doldrums it seems somewhat frequently. But I live and I work with many I admire, keeping practices of gratitude alive and fruitful in their lives. I am simply grateful to God for their living examples to me, to lift me up. When did you last offer a simple thank you to your mom and dad? A thank you to your spouse or friend saying why you are thankful? Do you tell a colleague why you appreciate them? How about a journaling practice such as a daily list of what you were thankful for that day? Focus on gratitude and you will begin to notice how much of your life is gift. Returning gratitude is a sacred act. Your heart and your soul expands. Your capacity to love expands. Happy early Thanksgiving. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the life for the world to come. As we await a world free of pain and suffering, we pray for our own needs and for one another. Our response is, Lord, accept our prayer. For the Church, that we will reflect the heart of Christ and go forth to those who need forgiveness, love, and the truth of the Gospel, we pray. Lord, Lord yeah. accept our prayer. For those in public office, that God will direct their hearts and minds toward the true peace and freedom of all, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For peace, that the Holy Spirit will guide combatants away from pride and wrath and towards the just re resolution of conflicts, we pray. Lord, Lord accept, accept our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick, that God will bless them with healing grace, we pray. Lord, Lord accept, accept our, our prayer. prayer. For the repose of the faithful departed, for Socorro Alan, Father James McCarthy, we pray. Lord, Lord accept, accept our, our prayer. prayer. For our personal intentions, for all for whom we have promised prayers and for the parish book intentions. We pray. Lord, Lord accept, accept our, our prayer. prayer. God of all compassion, our human weakness lays claim to your strength. Hear and answers our prayers, for we place our hope in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The song for presentation of gifts is Gather 960, Healer of My Every Ill, 960.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and the glory of his name, for the good and of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed men in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in your fullness, in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of, for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant, for when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice, which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this sacrifice, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The song for communion is gather number 75. The Lord is kind and merciful, number seven, five.
please join in singing in the Gather hymnal, number 783, Unless a Grain of Wheat. Please be seated for announcements. High school students, this Sunday, today, October 9th, we are having a service day at the Parish Center from 2 to 4 p.m. Mind that time difference is from 2 to 4 p.m. We'll be helping you dress a girl group. Your friends are always welcome, and of course, we will have snacks. The Dress a Girl Sewing Group will gather today also from 1 to 5 p.m. in the parish center. The Knights of Columbus will host a family movie night on Friday, October 14th at 6 p.m. in the parish center. Watch Veggie Tales and enjoy pizza, hot dogs, and popcorn. In-person Bible study is back starting Wednesday, October 12th and Saturday, October 15th. See the bulletin for details. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month Information and some resources are available at table in the narthex. Please see the bulletin for news on Knights of Columbus for families, the rescheduled Laudato Sea Garden Walk, winter clothing drive for day laborers, running for pie, and much more. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And for the conclusion of this Mass, receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The closing song is Gather 734. Bring forth the kingdom, number 734. <laughs>